So here we are at question nine of our VCAR exam for 2019. Question nine is notorious for being a experimental investigation. So let's have a read of what it's all about. And this is no different. A student designed an experiment to investigate current efficiency of a electrolysis cell um, of sodium chloride. Current efficiency is the amount of produced, expresses a percentage of the theoretical amount calculator using Faraday's laws. So we're using electrolysis, um, we're looking at current efficiency, um, and we're using Faraday's laws. Just some ideas about what this is going to be about. It's going to involve some form of redox um, and electrolysis. All experimental work carried out under standard laboratory conditions, so it's SLC, so therefore we can use the molar volume if we need to calculate volumes. The experiment used a Hoffman electrolysis apparatus anyway the following is a section of the students report what is the effect on current efficiency um, when we change the concentration of sodium chloride okay it's changed so therefore this here is going to be our IV um, and this is going to be our DV the aim obviously is pretty much the same as this and here's our procedure. Obviously, I'm going to go back and have a look at my procedure a bit later on. I'm just going to start now. I end up with an idea about the experiment. Let's go start reading some questions. Um, identify the dependent variable. Um, so, obviously, the dependent variable is what we're going to actually measure. The independent variable is what I change. So, I vary something. That's the sodium concentration. So, my dV is the current efficiency. So, this is going to be my current efficiency um, straight off the bat here let's have a look at my next part Oops. Uh, and identify a safety risk associated with the chemicals produced during the experiment alrighty so what is my experiment I'm electrolysizing something. I'm electrolysizing sodium chloride. Now, is this a concentrated version of sodium chloride or a weak? It's relatively weak um, here. So let's say where what is happening on my electrochemical series. So if I'm going to electrolysize something, I need to work out where these things are. I'm going to have um, my sodium. I'm going to have water so therefore this is going to be my strongest oxidant happening and this is going to react i'm going to produce hydrogen that's the safety hazard straight away um, and then on my other side i'm going to have chlorine and um, water water is my strongest reductant it's going to form my oxygen so therefore my safety risk in this experiment is probably going to be the hydrogen gas produced hydrogen gas produced from my electrolysis. Um, safety risk associated with that. Why is it um, damage? So why is it a safety risk? Because it's explosive slash flammable. What is one safety measure required to reduce the safety risk identified? This, we need to remove or keep it away from flames. Away from flames slash ignition sources. Alrighty, so therefore, um, we've got my reaction there. Now, let's move on and have a look at what else is happening here. Oh, I've got my apparatus. This is a, this is a diagram of Hoffman apparatus and correctly filled as required in step two. So basically they're filling up. You can see I've got my power supply. Um, I've got my positive over here. This is in my anode. This is my cathode because this is electrolysis. Cathode's negative in this case. So that means if I just look at this, let's just think about what's going to happen here. I have my cathode. My, my cathode, I'm going to have reduction happening. So I'm going to have having this reaction here occurring. All right, I'm going to have my hydrogen being produced over here. So H2 produced over here, and I'm going to have my O2 produced over here if it is in a relatively weak solution. Um, there. Moving on. Are the results in part one precise? All right, so precision means they are relatively close together. So let's have a look at what they've got. We're starting off with the same um, amounts here. These are all our different trials by the looks of it. And what have we got here? So these are all within, 
Yeah, they're very close actually, 0.5 of the um, average. What about these ones? These are, so actually within 0.4, three of the average, by the looks of it, which is pretty good. These ones over here, they're all within 0.3 of my average. So yes, they are. They are precise as they are all within a small range. And what is it? This is um, the difference here, 0 0.3. That's the biggest difference. And this one here is the biggest difference again, which is 0 0.3. So all within a small range of 0 0.3 mil of the average. There's no outliers, um, so therefore we're expecting them to be relatively precise. Write a half equation for the reaction that you would expect to observe at the negative electrode. Negative electrode is my cathode. So as I said before, what is happening in this cell, I'm electrolysizing sodium um, chloride. So therefore, I look here, I identify I've got sodium and water present. It's an aqueous solution. So therefore, this is going to react at my cathode. So I should have... Um, 2H2O, remembering states here, is a liquid, plus two electrons. This is going to produce hydrogen gas and 2OH negative, aqueous. Here's my response there. Next question is calculate the volume of gas that is expected at the negative electrode for part one using Faraday's laws. All right, so Faraday's laws, what does that mean? I need to use the fact that, um, that Q equals IT um, and the fact that Q equals number of moles of electrons times F. If you can't remember these laws, they are kind of sitting in here somewhere, um, which is the number of moles of electrons is kind of sitting here and that one's there. So therefore they are in a double clip. But let's just kick back and have a look at what these things are. What information do I have here that can help me work out what my amps and stuff are? All right, my current is two, so therefore my Q is gonna be two times. How long am I running this for? Let's have a look at this. I'm running my electrolysis for um, rinse it, connect power supply, turn on power supply, start timing, record there. After five minutes, turn off the power supply. So my time here is gonna be five times 60. So it's gonna be two times 300 equals 600. That's how many, what my charge is. Now, my number of moles of electrons is what I'm gonna find out next. So my number of moles of electrons is gonna be equal to uh, Q divided by F, so this is going to be 600 divided by 96500, which is my Faraday's constant. So therefore I'm going to take off, whoops, oh, it's pretty ugly. 600 divided by 96500 gives me uh, 0.006217 equals 6.218 times 10 to the power of negative one, two, three, negative three, and that's in mole. So I've got my number of moles that are being used in this experiment. Uh, that's my number of moles of electrons. I need to find out how much gas is gonna be produced. So my ratio here is two to one. So therefore number of moles of hydrogen equals half my number of moles of electrons. So therefore I'll take that and divide that by two. That's going to give me 0 0.00311 um, mole of a, my hydrogen. And then I can get to my volume of hydrogen. We had said that it was at standard laboratory conditions somewhere. Yep. So therefore, that's going to be N times Vm equals 0 0.00311 times 24.8, which is my molar volume at standard laboratory conditions. So I take that number, times it by 24.8, and I get 0 0.0770, well, so 771, equals 77.1 mil. 
So therefore that's how much gas I should be producing. Remember I'm using Faraday's laws, so I'm gonna be using my current to find out my number of moles of electrons, my ratio to get my number of moles of gas, and then straight into my molar volume. And that is how much volume I expect to get at the negative electrode, which is my cathode. So what's next? Calculate the current efficiency for part one. Now back here, I had a thing for current efficiency, which is the volume of gas produced divided by the expected thing. So therefore efficiency, so current efficiency equals um, gas produced over experimental. So therefore it's gonna be something divided by 77.1. And I will work out how much do I actually produce. And I'll have a look at this here. So my negative electrode, alrighty, what is the difference between what I started with and what I ended with at my negative electrode? I started with 170. I ended up with this, so therefore I actually produced 69.9 uh, mil. So therefore it's going to be 69.9 mil divided by 77. So therefore, if I times that by 1,000, I'll get to that number. I'll go 69.9 divided by my answer. It's going to give me times 100. Gives me, um, again, that should be times by 100 because we're looking at percentage efficiency. 90.7%. Now let's go and have a look at significant figures and all of this as well. It's probably what I need to look at. Here I've got um, four sniffing figures. This here is two sniffing figures. So I'm going to go and change these down. That is actually going to be 77 for two sniffing figures. Let's just do that nicely. 77 mil. I'll put a little circle around that to say that's my answer there. To two sniffing figures because that's my lowest significant figures there. Over here, it's not going to be actually that. It's going to be 91 percent to two significant figures, um, two sig figs, just to tell the examiner what I'm actually writing. That was off screen there for a bit, I think. But that's my answer. And let's move on. Okay, what is next? I've got part two, which is just showing my, my averages, and part three, which is showing my averages here. Now, what conclusion can be drawn from the results of part one, two, and three, and give my reasoning? All right, so what do we want to see? We want to see efficiency, current efficiency. So how well, I guess, the electrons are going through. So what does that look like? What's happening in each of these? My negative electrode with a low concentration, or so it was distilled water. Okay, this is distilled water. Um, we wouldn't have the chlorine at all. Anyway, I'm getting um, 69... Um, mil produced. At 1.5 molar, I'm getting more than that. And as I increase my um, molarity, it looks like I'm getting more gas produced. So therefore, my efficiency looks like it's increasing. So what conclusion can be drawn from that? I can see that my current efficiency increases with increasing concentration. And I can see that because, okay, this is what I'm, I can get, and then that's because there is more gas produced at a higher concentration of um, NaCl. So that is what I suggest is happening here. Is that happening at the other electrode as well? I can see the fact that we've got um, 35.1 and therefore I'm getting more gas produced here because I've got um, less water in it. So that's fair enough. And I've got a lot more produced here. So as I increase my NaCl, I'm getting more and more gas produced. I'm happy with that conclusion. State the change the student should make to ensure they achieve their aim. If they want to achieve their aim, what was their aim again? We wanted to see the effect of current efficiency on the um, sodium concentration, so effect of 
concentration on the current efficiency, what have they done? Can they actually do this? I think they can, but they're only using two solutions of sodium chloride. The other one was of distilled water. So here's what I'm gonna suggest they do. I suggest that they could use a greater range of concentrations. And if you ever want to test anything, if you want to make sure that you achieve your aim, you want to make sure that you do as many different trials and many different um, samples as you possibly can. So if they use a greater range of concentration, um, they, well, how could I say this? Um, they can have a clearer, um, clearer, trend to uh, show, for lack of a better word, that's not really using great scientific language there, but that's pretty much what I think we need to look at. Um, the fact that a greater sample range will then be able to show um, a clearer trend line. So let's move on. Uh, this question just keeps on going, doesn't it? How many marks is this question worth? It's worth 15. Alrighty, fair enough, so that's why it's taken a while. Now, scientists may use scientific posters, the joy of a scientific poster, to convey their results to other scientists. State two aspects of the electrolysis experiment that students should include in their discussion section. Discussion section should have a whole bunch of stuff. But the most important thing is they should um, discuss any any trends found um, in the results, all right? So they should analyze the results. So analyze the results, look for any trends. And I think the trend, identifying trends is a really key part of the discussion in a scientific research there. Now, what else they should do is they should back up the trends with, um, data from the results. There's the two things that I that we talk about a lot when we talk about experimental discussions, doing that. The other thing you can think about is looking at um, the limitations. Limitations, uh, they could talk about the errors, they could talk about the validity of the method. Method. Um, they could explain or highlight outliers. Out, outliers, there's so much you can put in here, liars, within this. But realistically, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna take these first two here. Um, in a actual exam, the examiners, because it says two here, the examiners are only gonna take your first two that you list anyway. So listing more is not gonna help your cause because they're not just gonna look for two correct ones. Exam is going to look for the first two only, but they're the two I think are the most important within a discussion, which is identifying trends and backing up those trends with data from the results. And that's the end of this question, I think. Um, experimental design questions, which is question nine, they are long. They take a bit of time to read through. A lot of the time you're going to need to go back and read through your procedure identify the key points of our procedure um, and they're probably a good thing to read through a little bit when you've got your reading time at the start so therefore you have a bit of an understanding about what the question is or try and work out what the actual experiment is. Nine times out of ten they should actually talk about experiments that you have either looked at or um, or one similar to what you've done in class. For instance, for example, most of us have done some electrolysis in class. We may not have used one of these um, machines, the Hoff machine, but um, we have generally done some electrolysis. So therefore you know how to look at the equations, you know how to look, use Faraday's laws um, and apply that knowledge. Hopefully this has helped um, and we're on to question 10, which is another fun one next.